Hi everyone and welcome to the NIME webinar on what's new in NIME 4.0 and of course also with the NIME server for NIME. Uh, I'm today here with Hayley, who is our eager marketing person at NIME. So if you see something nice on our website, it's mostly was done by her. Uh, my name is Iris. I joined NIME already four years ago. Time is flying. We were just discussing this. Uh, I'm a data scientist in our customer care team, helping our customers and users um, to understand the benefits of NIME. Um, if you're joining us in the NIME forum, you're pretty sure already to see one of my posts, but I'm currently trying to get have others answering as well. Um, we will go together uh, today through the hottest new feature in NIME uh, for zero and of course in the NIME server 4.9. And uh, I also want to make sure that I will highlight some of my personal favorite things. You know, every, there are so many things which were developed in the last six months. You might know that we are releasing big yearly new features. We will not be able to cover everything in depth, but I want to make sure that you at least have an overview of what you can afterwards try out. So. Let's give you a first, a very brief overview of what you can expect today. We will start with the performance improvements in case you did not hear about this already. Uh, afterwards, we will dig into the NIME hub, what this is, how can you use this, how can you benefit of it. Afterwards, I will present you the NIME components um, and what we did to make them more attractive for everyone to share your NIME expertise with your friends and colleagues. Then in the end, uh, before I told, told you about the most recent database notes we just added, we will dig into the most recent data science methods we added new notes for. Some of them were requested just by forum users. Some were requested by us from our customers. So whenever you have the need for a note, um, feel free to contact us in the forum. We are always happy to get ideas and to see what the community is needing. And in the end, I will shortly also go into details what we did improve for our commercial customers with the NIME server. But let's start with my personal favorite, performance. So we actually have a team now at NIME who is responsible for improving the performance. And I can show you this video, which you might have already seen um, on our What's New page. But I have the feeling it feels a little bit like cheating to just show you this video. So I instead really want to show you the workflows we did. So you see, I have two NIME versions running. You need to believe me that the top one is 4.0. And the lower one, the most, uh, the last, the most recent 3.7, so it's 3.7.2. What I will do now is I will start executing the lower workflow. You can see that the file reader starts running. We will read a file which is not super big. It's 100K rows, 100K, 100 columns. And the, if they mouse over the output ports, you can see this. Um, and after I did this, I now will also start the same workflow in 9.4.0. Also here, the file reader now is adding its job. And you can see that the lower uh, workflow, the old 9.3.7, did get, get a good chance to get up. It's already at the string to number, so 9.4.0 might have a hard time getting it catch up. But actually, based on this numerous performance improvements that can easily um, get up faster than the 937 workflow. We did not only improve the way we are saving um, in between steps, we also saved the way how we are executing workflows. And just to not miss the point, you might now see that I'm done with the 4.0 workflow by the 3.7 one. The 3.7 is still executing. Um, we, we did a test on our examples workflow, and we were able to prove that 98% of our example workflows are now significantly faster using NIME for, for zero. And if you did not update so far, I, I highly recommend do it and try out the new speed. So and as we need to talk to about other things as well, I will now cancel the 3.7 execution I think you got the idea because clearly the 4.0 was started already. 
Oh, by the way, um, as we are anyway have a three seven started, you might remember our welcome page, which, which gives you tips and tricks and also explains you uh, which updates are available here. Um, we did some improvements for, for, for zero here as well. With for zero, you're getting now a brand new welcome page, and we are keep on improving these to give you the best experiments and also to be able to to give you a faster learning rate online itself. Um, let me close this, and because I wanted to show you one more thing. One of the things I get asked a lot is how can I document my workflow now? And you might obviously already know our NIME annotations. We did a little improvement here. So if you want to change something now, you're getting this dialogue right on top. You might remember the old behavior where you need to right click um, and then a uh, context menu opened up and there you need to configure. And now all of this is just on top, right on your convenience. So I could easily change the background color to the over nine yellow. The other things how we are recommending documenting our nine workflows is the metadata for workflow. The metadata used to be opened by right clicking on the workflow and going to the edit meta information. We now made this a lot more visible in the workflow by having a dedicated window right here on top. You don't need to have a new window to, for being able to see this. You can just uh, use the note description for it. So if I click on any NIME note, you are seeing here right next to it um, the description of the note. And if I click anywhere else unselecting the note, I can add a description to my workflow. So you're here seeing the title is the name of the workflow is NIME on speed. And I could add an additional title for it. I could add description, tags, and of course, I can also add links to this. Let me go back to my slides. So I do have a lot of slides, please excuse, but the main reason is I want to share the slides with you afterwards. Um, so over some of the slides, I will mostly just run. So I did talk about the welcome page. Ooh, but this I did forget, good thing. Um, we did send out a survey uh, like four months ago, and we asked everyone um, how, some very basic questions, how they like NIME and uh, if we can do something to help them. And one thing we wanted to make sure is um, that if there are a need for a note, um, that we can cover this. And the note which was uh, then most mentioned by our users and customer base was the duplicate row filter. It actually sounds like something so easy, filtering duplicate, and we always recommended using the group by note trick, but there are still use cases not really covered by the group by note. So what we implemented is now a dedicated duplicate row filter note. Um, with this, you can do things. We, you're filtering the duplicates based on a certain set of your columns. And afterwards, you're selecting what is the duplicate based on the value in another column. So you are seeing here in the dialog, um, there I selected the minimum of the day of week. So if I have multiple days, I always select the first day of week to keep. I did show you our, our new workflow documentation system, how you can edit the metadata. And this brings me right to the next thing, the NIME Hub. We released the NIME Hub already in March this year, so you might have already stumbled over it. Um, we added with the summer release a lot of new features into the NIME Hub. And I wanted to show you how you can use this um, and also how you can share your own workflows with the NIME Hub yourself. For this, let's go first to the NIME Hub. So I need to go to my browser. And at first, the, all of the functionality covered in the NIME Hub is documented here in the About menu. So whenever you don't know what can I do with the Hub, just go to About, and there are a lot of work, uh, videos showing you how you can use the um, is the NIME Hub and uh, how all of this can be configured. 
if I now want to do something, I just type and then the, the Nime Hub will search for workflows and it will search for notes. So let's start for searching for the for duplicates. Obviously, um, we will find the duplicate row filter node just recently added, but we also find other nodes from our community. Like there is a duplicate node from the ImageJ community. There was a duplicate filter node from Mo. And there might be even more because we are not only searching the node name, we are also searching through the node description. Another quite recent extension of this is the TSNE node, for example. And here you see that my colleague Misha did chair a workflow with how to use the TSNE workflow. So I can go to this workflow and you're seeing that Misha is, an, is part of the NIME team. You can see a preview of the workflow and you are also able to download this workflow directly. Um, this is not only available to NIME team members, this is available to everyone in the NIME community. Important is you're here being able to download the workflow, but we are also offering short links to the workflow. And the benefit of this short link is that it's always valid, even so if the workflow is moved to another place. In the section below, you can see which extensions were used and also directly go down which nodes were used. And you can afterwards further investigate this. For example, go to the color manager, learn more about the color manager options or the views which are available, which actually are none, so the color manager does not have a few. And in the very end, for example, here there is a, there are actually now tons of workflows by our users. I'm searching one from our example server. Oh, let's take this one. So this is now a workflow living on our NIME example server. And you can see this because it's living in the NIME space examples. And if I now go down, I have the possibility to open the workflow directly in the NIME analytics platform. And I will do this once. Then it will start my NIME, which I did already do in the back. And let me switch to nine. Ah, it was confused. Um, it was a little bit confused because I have two nines open right now. So we did it, it started it in three seven. So you should not have two nines open. But uh, we anyway recommend updating to four zero. So let's do this again. So that's also the proof it's a live webinar, things can go wrong. So let's try this again. Hmm. And now we are actually in 940. And the workflow is open. And you can also see in the NIME Explorer right on the on the left that it's here selected from the NIME examples mount point living on the NIME hub. If I now want to have this workflow locally, I can save this as one of our one of my local workflows. And it will save me a copy of it, which can which I can afterwards edit. If I now, um, for example, I find some problems with this workflow and I want to share this with someone else, I would also be able to re-upload this on the NIME Hub. For for doing for re-uploading on the NIME Hub you first need to log in into the NIME hub. And this you do here on the My NIME hub, hub mount point. If you open it and double click, you will be forwarded to our hub for logging in. I did already log in. I can then go back to NIME and you see that here I already did upload two workflows. If I now want to upload another one, for example, I have this volcano workflow. And if you are afterwards searching the hub, you will find this volcano workflow on the hub. And I can now track up and I close it. Track and drop this workflow to my NIME hub and upload it there. 
If I now want to see this workflow again, I go to open and then I choose in Lime Hub. And now you're seeing it's me, Iris. Um, and I did upload this workflow and everyone can use and benefit from it. I can again choose download because, but because it's in a private space, I cannot open it directly. Let's go back to this workflow because it anyway contains something I wanted to show you. You might have already did, did hear about this, um, but what this workflow contains is our brand new Plotly integration. Yes, I, I do know a lot of people were waiting for this. We uh, implemented a set of nine nodes, which are now using the JavaScript Plotly library in the back. And we especially focused here on nodes which were not covered by our previous nine extensions. You see here one of the examples, which is a surface plot. And if I open the view, you can see that this is something people were long waiting for because it's actually a 3D plot. And you can now see the 3D of this volcano. Um, you can scroll around and you can also invest it. So you are focusing on different points and you can see the ups and heights, find maybe the highest points at all. So let's go. Um, you did see already that we are having two of these nodes. But how can you learn about these nodes? And what we would like to recommend here is that you are using the NIME Hub again for learning new nodes. So if I want to now want have more of these Plotly nodes, I can just Google Plotly. You find here one of our users already uploaded Plotly examples. And but if I here go to the notes, I, I will find a set of all of the Plotly nodes. I then go to the violin plot. And one of the things I did not show you so far is that you can also use this um, NIME hub view to directly track a node into the NIME analytics platform. You are here seeing already the icon. And if I mouse over, you see that my mouse changes so it uh, can do something with it. I quickly need to get my name in the back. And now I can take this note, release it in my name, and it will directly be inserted. I then need to configure it, like I would to, uh, need to configure a, NIME, a normal name node, execute, and all of this will be available directly for your name analytics platform. So let me go back to my slides. So we did go over the hub. Um, in the final presentation we will send out, there will be a lot more slides showing you how to use the hub. But you definitely need to remember that in the about page, you find a full documentation on it. So this brings me to the next bigger topic we did release. And these are the nine components. You, if you are using NIME for longer, you might have already used rep meter nodes. And what we did is we rebranded the rep meter nodes and added more and advanced functionality to them. What are rep meter nodes for? Um, rep meter nodes you are using for sharing expertise and best practices. What we did um, in addition to them and all one of the uh, you reasons we are renaming them to components is that we want to simplify the connection setups. And we want to make sure that you can use a NIME component just like a regular NIME node, because this will fulfill the complete picture that you are able to use a NIME component and to share a NIME component. And the other user you want to share your expertise with just can use this node and does not have any as a difference in how it used. We, what we also needed to do to make this happen is a split in our NIME quick form notes. If you did already update, um, you might have noticed there are now a lot more of these nodes for configuring and um, automating of workflows. 
The reason behind is our old quick form notes and were used for different areas. And this did always make it very difficult to model clearly what their purpose was. Um, it also was very difficult from an end user perspective to see which of the quick form nodes um, were used for the configurations and which of them were used for the visualization or the nine web portal in the very end. We therefore split the nodes in two. There are now configuration nodes and there are widget nodes. I have this again on this slide. And for really understanding the concept, what me helped a lot is that I reconsidered how a NIME node is actually used. What you're doing with a NIME node is you're first configuring it. So here is, as an example, the decision tree learner dialog. You're going to the configure, you're changing parameters, you're hitting OK. Afterwards, you're executing it. Um, so the node gets green, all, everything is set up. And in the last step, you are going to the visualization part. And in the visualization part, you can still change some parameters, you can interact with the view, but you're not going to re-execute something. You are just changing the way how you are visually inspecting it. And this is the same way how you can also build now your NIME components. And I want to show you this, actually, with the components I just did for this webinar today. Let me go back to my name and open the workflow I did this to. So the idea here, again, the duplicate row filter, I'm really addicted to it. Um, the idea here is you do have this decision tree learner. And people like to use it because it's easy and straightforward. But actually, if you're a data scientist, you might know that a decision tree learner is quite unstable and that it's sometimes a lot better to use random forests. But new NIMERS or more the data wrangler people, they don't want to use a random forest because it might be too complicated for them. What they would like to have is just such a simple component like here. They can configure it um, by just changing two parameters. You can change the prediction columns. It's just you can predict the prediction or you can predict the sentiment. You can also increase the number of trees to be learned. I, if I keep the small, so I just want to learn 20 trees. And in the end, I'm executing this and I have a PMML to write. But I also have in decision tree learners so that I can inspect this decision tree view. This is nice. Um, but for, for newbies, this might be a little bit too complicated. So what I did in the NIME component is that I developed a dedicated view just for the, uh, for the new NIMERS to see the performance. And you can open this on the component, right-click, context menu, interactive view, simple decision to learn. This view will not be the same um, like the one from decision tree. What I want to give the people is the out of box course. So they see how well the model performs with respect to the out of back. We have an over out of back accuracy of 87%, which is pretty okay. And I also added um, a little addition to so that people can see feature importance. And here I selected the top four most interesting features. As you see, I did use um, this node like a normal nine node. Also, you might have noticed if you know our old quick forms that you have now no longer to check the change button. This is also something we were able to improve just because of the split. So let's now take a look into this component. You can always open a component, right click component and open. Or my personal shortcut, um, very nice, is just press control and then double click. Looks like a charm. So this is how the component now looks in the inside. And you can see um, that I split this into the three parts, similar to what I had on my presentation. On the top, I'm using these configuration nodes. Because this is the configuration step, the very beginning of my workflow. I then merge together the different variables I got from the configure. So I pass back to the execution process. 
And here I'm controlling a random forest. ISN converts this back into a PMML, so the end user does not have to struggle with this. And in the very lower end, I'm using the widget nodes, so also the JavaScript nodes, um, like the table view or the score are part of our widget nodes for the visualization. And using this, I, ma I make it clear um, what is what needs to be done before execution and what is only needed for preparing the output of the visualization. If you did make such a component, you can afterwards share this with others. And for being able to share this, you can also always go to the component menu and use the option share. Then it will ask me if I directly want to share it on the NIME hub, or if I just want to share it locally, I will just share locally. I can create a link to this, either absolute, mount point, or workflow relative, or I don't create a link. Let me create a link. If I do did create a link, and um, you might see here very tiny, there's now a yellow, a green but, um, arrow telling me that this, Meta note is now linked to the template, and this template is living here in my local. So I could add more versions of these components into my workflow, uh, but I obviously can also export it, send it to others, share it with others via our NIME server, um, or reuse it in multiple different workflows. One of the things what was important for us when releasing the components is also that we directly share some of them on our example service with you. You therefore now find a new category in the example servers where we are, will regularly push new components inside. We had, have built a set that only on financial analysis. We worked on the model interpretability. Uh, we added quite some for time series analysis and also just do, for doing parameter optimization. Sounds basic, but this is also something which you need to do very, very often. And you, if you always need to reconfigure the nodes, this just saves you a little bit of time. So I did show you the reusable components living on NIME Hub. Um, if you ever have the chance to check one of the components living on the NIME Hub, also check out how we are doing error messages. Because um, we wanted to make sure that you can really use this NIME component like you would use a normal NIME node. And then also a normal NIME node will have NIME, will have errors when there are missing columns, for example. And this is also implemented in our public components living on the hub. Let's go to my next favorite. Let's go a little bit away from the hub. Wait, this is something I was long waiting for because um, the developer, Tobias, who works a lot with, with his team on this, he always tells me, ah, I was, everything will be better with the new database node. And guess what it is? Um, there are three things um, I wanted to um, highlight here a little bit because these were the three main triggers why we did spend um, so much time on rewriting all of our database notes. The top one for me is usability. Um, we did improve a lot in the graphical user interface. I will demo users in a second. Um, and we also improved the way uh, how the nodes are named. For example, it's now easier to find the, the best node for your use case. Um, we also did work a lot on performance. Um, just as one hint, we will have a, a blog post soon about this. But what is super cool is that the d database reader is now streamable. So you can stream your data out, do some things in NIME, and stream it back to the cloud. Very cool. Um, and the last reason why we needed to, um, or why we decided to have a new database integration is that we wanted to have a clear way how connections are handled. Um, we now will open one NIME connection or one database connection for every connector in a NIME workflow. So if you have five database connectors in your workflow, there will be five connections opened. Um, those connections will be closed when you are closing the workflow or if the workflow is getting discarded on the NIME server. Um, 
if you want to dedicate the closes, we, we need to have you waiting a little bit longer um, because we will in re release in December a note for directly closing the connections after it was opened. For example, if you have a long running workflow, you want to make sure after the workflow did run, the connection will be closed down. One of the things a lot of people were worried, and we de definitely wanted to make sure these worries uh, calm down, is what do I do with all of my old workflows? I have one million database workflows. Do I need to convert all of them? Obviously, you don't. Um, we will keep the old nodes as legacy for quite some time until we have a good feeling that the people no longer need the old ones. And um, for being able to provide you with a quick way how to go over to the new system, we implemented a migration tool. And slides are nice, but demos are nicer. Let's go into my Nine Analytics platform and open a workflow with which I can show you how to convert this into a new um, into the new database system. If you ever did a NIME course, you might remember this workflow. This is actually what we are building in the NIME course. So you're here seeing this is a H2 connector, some, some database selection, grouping, sorting, querying, joining, and in the end, we got the data back into NIME. Just so you still have it, I will open one of the dialogues. So this was the database query dialog of the NIME legacy node, or this, was the database table selector. You could basically just type a SQL query here. Now let's go to the new system. What I need to do is, I first need to save my workflow once. I send right click and in the context menu, go to the end and there is a migrate workflow option. Um, we do add a a warning here because uh, some of the nodes cannot be converted for main reason here is that some of the nodes are now replaced by two to make uh, modeling data database operations easier um, if you have any other problems in this uh, please come to the nine forum and tell us about it we are happy to fix this for the next minor bug fix release so let's migrate the workflow you are here seeing the original workflow is called 11 database solution. This will, the migration will generate me a copy. So no work will be lost. I go to the next page. It will ask me to do some saves. All good. I'm not going to save. Um, and on the first page, it now asks me, um, it now tells me what is going to happen. The H2 connector legacy will be replaced by H2 connector and so on. Very nice, the old database connection table reader will be replaced by DB reader, so nice. Let's go to the next page. Now the migration actually did happen in the back. It was a small workflow, so it was fast. And it now gives me some warnings. Um, there was nothing serious. It just told me that I should validate H2 connector settings in case I cannot execute it. Um, and it did also tell me which node was placed by which. I can save this migration report as an HTML if I want to, um, but I won't, don't want to. And I can choose to open the migrated workflow after finish. Also this I would like to. So let's go finish and check out the new database integration. Um, you can now see all of the nodes were migrated and I can just put the execute button to have all of this running. I am writing into the database and reading in the very back in back into nine. So I did show you before uh, the database tables and lecture. Look how much nicer this is now. First you have here the option for a custom query. This is mainly for backwards reason. You, so you said people are still able to write the query. And if they do, they now get syntax highlighting. And you can just evaluate this and see a preview of this. And then you can already check out the top 10 rows and just throw to them to see if this is the result of the table you are expecting. If you do not want to write a query, just deactivate the custom query and to go here to the selected table. 
This will open our brand new database metadata browser. And if I open it, I can select one of the tables here and directly will be filled into my database, my schema and my table entry. Um, I did not previously show you the DB query node. And also this did, did now get the same syntax. So also here I can do an evaluation. I directly have a very nice database metadata browser in which I can also search, for example, um, to find my tables faster. And also as you're used to, you have here the database columns list and the old flow variable. I want to show you one more note because I just love the way how they did the, the graphical user interface to it. And this is a DB row filter. If you do remember our old row filter, you basically had the option to select a column and do one operation on it. Now you can build full trees on this. Um, you can select one of the products here. Then I can choose equal. And with this button below, you're seeing, just press it. And then it's fetching me all possible values from the metadata. And I can choose one of them, let's say PNB investment. And now this is built here as one of the rules. I can add a condition and combine those two rules into one by now also selecting something for the count. So let's say the count should be greater than 100, for example. Also here I can get the possible values, but as is a numerical, this might be a lot of values. I can now then click OK. I can execute and, and my data is filtered down. The rest of the experience is very similar to what you had before. Just give, give all of the new dialogues a try. We did um, improve a lot of them. If you feel anything is not intuitive, just let us know. We are always happy about your feedback. Um, if you have any more questions uh, about the database notes, um, here is a guide on the, in the documentation where we documented the changes. And I added for your slides and for your documentation the list of notes which were just added with the most recent release to the database extensions, which were not available previously with the old database notes. I also like the database merge node, by the way, a lot. It just makes your life very easy. It's basically your first update, and if update is not available because the search pattern didn't work, you can do an insert. So it saves you one step of your time. Let's, let's go a little bit forward um, to, to, to get you through all of the features we added. I did already show you the nine plotly extension. Please note, uh, as we are usually doing with print new nine extensions, this start living on the nine labs. So if you have an existing nine, uh, you might need it to install it from our nine labs. But then you're getting all of these fancy visualizations like the, the heat map you're seeing here, or actually this is something in the in the corner on the right, you are seeing a violin plot. Very cool. Um, we also did, did a, a lot of small things, and I would just push them through so you did see all of them. Um, we added uh, nodes which can directly connect to Amazon. And here, what we did implement it so far is that we implemented nodes for translating and also for comprehending. So one possible use case for Comprehend would be sentiment analysis, or we want to do entity tagging, or we do syntax tagging. In, we are now going over to the things we did cover for machine learning. We did add a new node um, for calculating an isolation forest into our H2O extension. Uh, isolation forex will is, for example, useful for anomaly detection. If you did ever use our TensorFlow extension, we it is now also compatible to the ONX uh, uh, format. So you can read the ONX format and then convert it into our TensorFlow network and finally use our existing TensorFlow network executor to process and execute it. We 
also improved quite a lot of our machine learning automation nodes. Um, you might know that whenever you need to automize something in NIME, you end up needing a NIME loop for it. We have dedicated loops for feature selection and for parameter optimization. Um, what we did always have is the straightforward methods, and we now want to save you and also us a lot of time by having faster algorithms there. What we did add to the feature selection um, is a genetic algorithm and also a random algorithm. So we are just trying randomly out some of the possible combinations. And in the end, we are, we are, select, we are showing you out of these randomly selected the best one. For the parameter optimization, we have the random option since last release already, but we now did add an addition in Bayesian optimization method, which you can also use to faster improve and also hopefully more accurately improve the parameter optimization loop. Um, for, for the ones always struggling with explaining to your boss uh, how well my NIME model performs, we have now um, enhanced our model interpretability uh, techniques. We have added the shapely nodes and also for visualization, we added the partial dependence and ICE plot. Uh, this is actually a note which I got a lot of requests for us as a TSNE, which is learning a two-dimensional embedding or multi-dimensional embedding for you. And we now also here added a dedicated NIME node for it. So let's go a little bit forward. Um, this brings me to something else. If you remember in the beginning, I was talking about that we split the quick forms to make the system clearer. And one of the things quick forms were also mis a little bit misused for was for the NIME service REST API. We also here wanted to be able to clear a model what you are doing and what you are sending to a workflow. And for this, we did implement the container nodes. And container nodes are the nodes you are using whenever you want to talk to a workflow, either via the REST, NIME Server REST API or via the core workflow node. We now have a container input row nodes and output, of course. And we did already previously have container table, uh, in and out table nodes for sending a full table to the workflow and back. All of this is controllable via REST, but it also helps you making um, executable workflow via a call local or call remote workflow a lot easier. Uh, let's, uh, we are already to the pre-last section. We are coming to the big data part. Um, if you are using Kerberos in your company, you know it's it's very useful because you do not uh, constantly keep your username and password and add it to all of our NIME nodes. But you need to set it up. And this was previously something user reported to us they felt not very comfortable with. So we did spend quite some time on improving the Kerberos authentication and how all of this is integrated into the NIME Analytics platform. Also on this topic, we will have a dedicated blog post explaining you how you can set this up. Um, so watch out for the NIME blog. It should be online within the next two months, I hope. For the NIME big data integrations, we were always offering the Spark machine learning nodes. We did a major rewrite of these to be able to add more features to them. Um, we can now handle directly in the node categorical columns, and we are able to provide class probabilities with the predictor nodes. If you did ever use our previous nodes, you definitely will see the benefit of this. We did this so far for all of the tree-based nodes. We will continue working on this. If, if you have any node, you definitely need to be converted to the new framework. Just let us know, and we are happy to prioritize this a little bit higher. But we will try to have as much of the functionality covered in the new framework as possible with the winter release. Um, this brings me over to the NIME server section. Um, 
if for, for those of you who don't use the NIME server, uh, don't leave us. We will in the end have a question and answer session. And I will try to keep the server session small so um, only the people who are interested can, can focus on. So if you have never heard about our server, the, the NIME server is needed whenever you are working in bigger teams and you want to find a way to collaborate on your NIME workflows or you have just those workflows you need to run daily and then you can use the NIME workflow to automate your workflow execution. On the system administrator side, you are then able to manage and monitor what your colleagues are doing. And um, for the end users, you are able to deploy applications um, either via REST or via our NIME web portal to the NIME server. We, with the most recent NIME release, we released the remote workflow editor in the final stage. Um, what we did is uh, that we had it in preview mode for quite some, some, I think, 12 months now. And it's now in the final state, so you can now install it and it's fully tested. Um, we did with the most recent release also add some new features with it. So if you are using a remote workflow editor on the NIME server, you can now also do directly read files from the NIME server. And um, you can also directly execute it and open views, for example. Um, one of the nice things here is also that you are able to change node configurations, for example, directly on the NIME server without having to download the workflow first. You, if you're here seeing in the picture an example of it where you can see that it will refresh every 1000 milliseconds. All of this is configurable. So depending on how well the connection is to your NIME server, you can improve, decrease or increase this a little bit in your preferences. One of the use cases our servers use quite a lot for is for scheduling. And we did improve our scheduler with the most recent release. So that it allows you to start a NIME workflow at specific times or to limit the times down to specific start and end dates. We also changed the way how you can get notifications from the server. So whenever you are running your workflow on the NIME server and execute it, you can send yourself or your colleague a NIME email. Um, so far, you always got an email if it's successfully or failing. We now added the feature that you can that you select if workflows are sent on um, success or on failure or on both. Um, the last thing we added here, uh, if you don't have a slide for it, is the report action. You can also now have this report directly saved inside your NIME server. So you do not need to save it yourself and you have a backup of all the reports from your shadows directly generated. With, with the 4.9 release, we also added workflow pinning to our distributed executors. With this, you are now able to have different executors with different sets of functionality. So in my example here, you're seeing that I have this one GPU workflow and I actually want to reserve this for workflows being able to run on GPO and benefiting from the GPO, like our NIME image processing extension, for example. Then I have this other second executor. It has a lot of memory. The Python extension is installed, but here I only did install it for text analytics. And this I will reserve for my sentiment analysis workflows. And then I have the third one for all of the others. Um, so whenever there is no image, no, no sentiment needed, and I just have a small, fast running workflow, I send it to my general pur purpose executor. One tiny addition we did um, until now, the permissions dialog were always reduced to groups. And you can now have this also selected down to users. We also um, updated our NIME cloud offerings. So you might know that NIME server is available in the cloud. Um, we now have uh, NIME server large with version 4.9, including auto scaling on the cloud. 
Uh, we have also NIME Server Small, and there is a free trial available on Azure. And if you need any documentation, um, independently to what I presented today or what you did know already on the server, you can always get this now from us online. It's freely available on docs.nime.com. There is documentation for our commercial products, but also for all of our free products like the NIME Analytics platform available. So these were my personal highlights from the NIME for zero update. And actually, it's now up to you to update to NIME for zero. Uh, check out our performance improvements. Um, the team did spend quite some time to add speed here, and I personally highly appreciate it. It's so much faster now. Try connecting to the NIME Hub, upload some workflows, or just download workflows from others. You can also comment on the workflows. I did not show this, so this is something um, for you to find out at home. You can also share your experience to, to others using a component. Or if you're a data scientist, why not try out any of our data science tools I presented today? So if you have any questions, and I hope uh, some of you did already. Yes, Haley is nodding. So we will um, turn off the presentation. I Just before I turn off, if you don't want to ask now, you can always ask us in the forum. But we have now some time for questions, and we will use it. Just give me one second. And we're actually here. Hi, Hi everyone. <laughs> Thank hey. you, Iris, for your webinar. Um, I obviously knew about a lot of these features that were released, but it's always nice to hear the a really good explanation. So thank you. I'm sure everyone found that super, super valuable. Thank the, you for your kind words. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> this webinar and the slides will all be available on the same link. Um, we will link, um, the webinar will be published immediately after this is finished. And we will also link to the slides, which we upload to SlideShare. So it's all available for you. And if you have any questions, like Eva said, you can always ask us in the forum. But there were a few questions in the chat. So it's the first one is, um, should we uninstall the older version if I don't want to keep two versions? Or does version 4 remove the previous version of NIME Analytics Platform? Um, so you don't need to uninstall. The 4.0 installer will uninstall the previous version. But you can also keep books. In this case, you need to um, get the zip file from our, our, our download page. And then you have both versions running. This is also possible. Cool. Um, can we edit the templates that you created? For example, some of the ones in your demo. Oh, yeah, you can. Because you can download them. And then you are unlinking the template from the version to the link. And afterwards, you can edit it and change it to the way you like it to have. So you have the extensions you need it, or you might want to have another model. I, I showed the random forest. You might want to use the gradient boosters, and you can just change this. Cool. Thank you. Um, is there a way to tunnel the database connection through SSH? This would definitely help Ooh. a lot of people. So. I'm aware we have this open. Uh, it's an open feature request, and we are working on fixing this as soon as possible. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> Does Nime Hub provide REST API? Um, who I would not <laughs> like to, to to ask you back what you want to do with the REST API, uh, but we. We have a small REST API with which you can back, get some basic statistics, but there is no execution, for example, provided. Okay, I hope that answers the question. Yes. Um, some positive feedback. So thank you that the Plotly integration is awesome. So that's very cool. We'll pass that on to the team. We'll pass this on. And that was it. I think I've got everything. Yes, I do. So thank you for your questions. Um, there haven't been any more that have come through in the last few minutes. So, um, yeah, like I said, or like Ira said, check out the forum and check out our blog and our documentation and everything's on there. So thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Iris, for your great presentation. And we'll see you at the next NIME event or webinar. Yeah. <laughs> bye. Yeah, bye.